Well, uh, hello, friends. Welcome to the From Busy to Rich podcast. Our podcast exists to inspire advisors like you to increase your profitability and quality of life, but not just for you, but for those that you serve. My name is Andy Traub. I'm joined, as always, by Mr. Wes Young. Wes, how are you today? How are you, Andy? Doing great. Awesome, awesome. And Justin is here as well. Justin, thanks for joining us. Good to be here, sir. And we have someone else, if you're watching us, which we hope you'll check us out uh, on video sometimes because it's sometimes funny. We get to, you know, uh, get, to, get to see us live in an action. Uh, and we're, we're joined by a fourth today. Uh, Mark, why don't you introduce yourself and tell folks where you're from? Uh, yes, my name is Mark Bearfield. I live in a small town north of Wichita Falls, Texas called Burt Burnett. I've uh, been here since July of 2015. I've uh, been when uh, my family and I moved out here. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us today on uh, from Busy to Rich podcast. And I want to ask you, when did you first get connected? Uh, we're going to talk about sort of how Wes has influenced you and your company. But when did you first get connected with Wes and the work he does with advisors? Yes, sir. So a couple of years ago, um, I had heard about Wes from some friends I was at with a previous firm, talked to me about the process he was using, using and how successful he had been. And then I guess in December, January, I was introduced to um, the class that he teaches and signed the up transform, for it. The transform. The transform. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. And uh, signed up for that. And it's just been transformational for me. I mean, the, the, the transform word is very, very correct. It's uh, appropriate. It's appropriate. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so let me ask this. So, and, and this is not on the script. So, uh, you know, we might have to edit this, Justin, but he- had you ever made any sort of investment like that of that size um, in a training outside of, you know, stuff with your own company? Uh, what, what was that? What did it mean for you to have to invest in your, in your own business and yourself to, to get something like that? Yeah, I'd had, um, I had hired some financial coaches before this, but it was very much centered on the sales side of it. And uh-huh. um, so this was probably about the same investment just in a completely different mindset and what if transform is not sales for those who don't know what transform is then how would you describe transform i mean like we like sales everybody just to be clear we're not anti-sales so no yeah so it, it so yeah. what is it how is it more than sales so it's more what of a it, what does it include so instead of sales it's service so you sit down with people and really find out what their their fears, their anxieties, the things that bother them the most, the things that keep them up and how you can help them. And the thing that really helped me a lot, uh, I was really good at finding people. Like I would get appointments um, from people that I would meet at the gas station. Just walk up to a guy and be like, hey, I love the bumper on your truck. And just off that conversation. Well, this is, to find very, out who this is very Texas. This is very Texas talk. You do that yeah. in New York, you get shot. Let yeah. Just to be clear. You know? yeah, yeah. West Texas, uh, small okay. town, West okay. Texas. But okay, uh, okay. yeah, but I can introduce myself very well. And there was a disconnect between um, talking to them and getting the initial appointment with them and moving them into a place where it was serving them the way that mm-hmm. uh, we could really serve them the deepest. Mm-hmm. So Wes, when you were designing the, the program, which obviously came out of your own experience of, of, of many years in the business, and we'll get to a little bit more about you, Mark, as a person, but I just want to make sure people understand how we kind of met, uh, which is through Transform. Wes, why was it important when you made Transform to make it more than just sales scripts? Because frankly, working with hundreds of advisors, a lot of them just go, can I just get a script? Can you just tell me exactly what to say? So why why is it more than that? Why was it important for you to make something more than than just that? Yeah, I, I think there are so many. We, we've been on this kind of theme, Andy, for the last couple of, of podcasts. There, there are so many things out there that will tell you what to do, but but there are very, very few classes or or things you can engage in that not only do that, but tell you, it deals with the part of you that still won't do it. And, and when with Transform, we wanted to make sure one thing was constant is that that our greatest opportunities to recognize our future possibilities isn't about necessarily abandoning your new your normal or rejecting the new, but keeping attention between the two and creating a lifestyle of that so you can continue to basically make better decisions, live with fewer regrets as you're navigating the way you approach this business. So it's imperative for us to not, not just deal with good language, good ideas, uh, ways that people can do a holistic fee-based financial planning process 
and, and eventually, you know, of course, we we're, we love AUM. We love making sure people are protected and have insurance products, but but a different kind of relationship with the client. And to do that, it just just sales scripts or product uh, focused um, conversations were not enough. It, it needed to yeah. be it needed to be way more than that. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like where you ended up there, which was like, hey, th- those are fine, but that's not enough. You know, like a car is not just four wheels. Like that's a car. No, it's just four, or just an engine. You know, like you you have to have all the components to get where you want to go. And I think Transform does a good job of c- connecting all those things. So, Mark, um, I, I want to ask. We're going to go back a little bit. Um, you you have this is you said you were in Texas since 2015, but your family is quite the history there. What's that? Uh, yes, sir. My my family on my mom's side settled out here in 1911 in a little town called Kittaquay, Texas. Um, if you can spell it, better on you. Um, but we we have a ranch out there that was established in 1911, and my family has been in that community ever since. Um, it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of my family's life. And yeah. one of the biggest things that drove us to do what we're doing now is uh, whenever my grandfather passed away, we had to sell half of the property. Uh, to settle estate taxes. And so wow. if we would have, wow. if we would have, we had somebody that was taking care of AUM for us, but not a plan for us. And so that was a big driver for me was <laughs> to find people I, that needed plans, not just asset management. That hurts, man. That hurts. I'm sorry. Well, um, so that's the history of uh, your family. Um, tell, tell us if you can, in just a minute, um, your, your, Everybody wants to know what's your story, right? Like, you know, because everybody wants to figure out, you know, is this did somebody hand this guy business? You know, uh, did he did he did he work in a town where he knew everybody already? And he switched from a bank to da da da. You know, so so tell us your story in the business and 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 uh, where you're at now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, right after college, I went to a small town called Plains, Texas, where I was a youth minister for about five years. That's where I met my wife. There's 1,450 people in the whole town. We got married because we were the only two single people under 70. Uh, just it made sense. Um, after yeah, being a worked. youth minister, yeah, after being a youth minister, um, I was a, a football coach out in East Texas around Mineola, Tyler, uh, Gainesville area for about 10 years. I was the wow. offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, uh, inside linebacker coach. And the thing I did the most was strength conditioning. So I was the guy wow. in the weight room that – did all the program. So you went there. from someone that was really seen with a lot of respect and esteem to someone who was seen with even more respect and esteem because you went from youth pastor to football coach in Texas. So I think that might have been a an upgrade to some some people's eyes, right? So that's yeah. that's some holiness right there, right? Yeah, I mean that's and that's kind of a saying around Texas is uh, if you break down in a town, just go find the head coach; he can get you help. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. All right. So ministry coaching. Um, and, and we're still not to finance. Yes, sir. So, uh, I took a leap of faith. Uh, I'm, um, my wife and I are very, I have a very deep relationship, um, in Christianity. So we took a leap of faith. I quit my job coaching. I was well on my way to becoming an athletic director, head football coach. I just saw the time it was going to take away from my family. And I did not want to, to do that. Yeah. Felt yeah. being pulled away from the football athletic school area. And got an opportunity out here in West Texas and in Wichita Falls to um, come join uh, with another advisor, take over a small part of his book and um, to get my start out here. So we moved out here in July 2015, really, when we didn't even have a a job completely. I didn't I hadn't completed any of my training or my testing. My wife didn't have a job at all. And so we moved our two kids uh, out here, moved into a house and really just trusted this is where we were supposed to be. So, um, so tell me about like, you know, did you start off with a, you know, a massive cushion and they gave you hundred K your first year and it was just easy street, uh, that, that, that would be awesome. I'm guessing that was not your situation. No, no. We moved to a completely, uh, a town that's completely new to us. We'd never been here before. Um, not a part of our community, not a part of anything. Uh, and in, in this area, it's very deeply rooted in generations. So there's people that have been here for three generations and they have very deep relationships with people. We did not get that at all. Um, I did. The, the numbers were big, but the payout was small because um, it was all commission based stuff. And so if I wasn't making sales, I wasn't making money. And there was there was a month where I brought home seven hundred dollars and I was like, great, we can pay for groceries and wow. nothing else, you know, um, but still felt led to be here. Um 
and it's been good. Um, have transitioned from the original firm I was with to the one I'm with now. And um, again, starting over, uh, still months, you know, starting over the last year and it's still been a few of those very slim months, but things have started building up because of what I've learned um, with the planning based platform. And Mark, so, so Wes, go ahead. One of the things that, that I, I loved, we had breakfast uh, after after the Transform deep dive session in uh, Austin, and, and I got to hear more of the details behind your your story and the and 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 like because you were talking about how well the process was working now and uh, and the amount of of, of fee based financial planning clients that you had that that have just or were coming <laughs> online left and right and and I asked you well what tell me what it was like in a day in the life of you before that and and when you were back at that original steps and and what was going on there so if you tell everybody that that piece of the the story uh yes sir so i i had the privilege to uh one of the things that we had to do was get 300 names and numbers in five weeks and uh going door to door in our community and there's ten thousand people in our community so that's a very large percentage of people that you are going to probably upset so that uh was very concerning to me um but I knocked on a thousand doors and got 400 names and 400 numbers in four weeks in August in a suit and tie and slept the last week. Um, <laughs> cause I had five weeks to get it done. Um, but yeah, the, the big thing that I had been taught was to go door to door and try to find some, try to find people that my cog and widget would fit into their life somehow and, uh, try to see if there's a way for me to get, to get in to help them by selling them something. That's great. That's great. And, and, and I'm sure that that was uh, extraordinarily easy. You know, they, people were <laughs> welcoming in all those yeah. places. Yeah. Well, I, I had a high, I had a very high conversion rate out of a thousand doors. I'd convert about 7%. Um, I actually got awards two years in a row of opening a hundred households a year. So for two years consecutively I opened 200 households, which was high fives and, come to our home office and teach people how to do that. And I, when I would get back home, I'm like, we cannot keep doing this. This yeah. is not a way to run a deep dive business. Um, oh, I see. It was yeah. more transactional. So it was, we were having to, cause for me personally, I wanted to go deeper than wider. And for me to, I had over 500 households whenever I left the first firm I was at, and I just could not sustain that. Yeah. And you were, you, you had never charged a fee at all in that environment, right? It just wasn't the model. We, we could not charge a fee for that. We had to, and that was the, the dichotomy and the, the struggle within was I have this, this part of service for people. I want to serve. I want to provide, you know, a, an opportunity for people that just don't even know they have an opportunity at times. And the only way I could put food on my family's table or my son's 13, you know, every year his pants get a little bit shorter, mine get <laughs> yeah. a little bit tighter. And I think it's Angela shrinking our pants um, because mine wasn't getting tighter for any other reason. But um, the only way that I could really provide for my family was if I sold something to them. Well, let me ask you this, Mark. So, so you hear about through a friend, you hear about transform and you decide, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go in that direction. Can you, um, can you tell us how the conversation is different on a really practical level for those who are listening you know, what does it sound like now versus, you know, when you, you know, opened up a hundred households and you hated it because it was just bam, 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 bam. So what, what's different now in the way that you approach conversations with people and the way that you, um, you consider winning? Yeah. So going at the, com- the conversation is completely different. Like it was a paradigm shift for me. Like it was a completely okay. new how, way. How to so it, get, get, get super yeah. practical for me. What, what's different. So instead of going, Hey, you're a business owner, you need a retirement plan or, Hey, you're retired. We might look at an annuity for you because that would really help out retired folks. I could go in and go, I could just slow down. I could slow down and go, man, what is the biggest concerns that you have? I mean, if, if there was anything that you could, you need help with right now, any of these things that are fears or worries or, or even things that you're upset about, what are those? Yeah. And yeah. I could sit there and, and dig into those a lot deeper instead of going, Hey, let's move your stuff over and then have that conversation. Let's, let's get your assets over here and then we can have that conversation. Yeah. Wes, think- what are you hearing there? 
one of the things, Mark, you had talked to me about was when, you, when we were talking about like the, the first steps of the process. And when you heard those and you began to, to have those, those location phase conversations that, that where it, it's that total, uh, to- totally coming in and saying, hey, you know, w- we work with primarily people that own businesses. We, we, uh, most of them already have good advisors when we start working with them. Some have, are, have been successful, haven't done a lot. But no matter where they fit on that spectrum, they all have that one thing in common is all of them have far more things they're trying to get accomplished than they have time to get to everything. And in their effort to get to as much as they can, there's always stuff that's left undone, right? Stuff that that sometimes they know about, it's been on a list. And then quite often stuff they're not aware of that if they were made aware would radically alter their profitability and quality of life. And that's where we come in. We start by, as you said, Mark, asking a lot of questions about where they are from a financial standpoint and also about what story are they moving towards? What's, what's, what, what is that story they're in about money that they want to end up at? And, and then we, once we know that, we can have some great dialogue around the areas of planning that may be most useful. Such a reverse, where you told me, from coming in and going, let me tell you all the areas that are going to be useful. And they're always the areas that align with the product that I sell or whatever it is, the, the asset I manage. Instead, it's, hey, let's unpack this. And, and I think what you had said, the big transition in your mind too was not only the the language but the that you were going to be paid for advice regardless if you sold a product and regardless if you placed uh but put money under management although you also told me the funny thing is when i started doing that i started pay, being paid for my advice because you you get you jumped on that quickly like you i think within one month had charged they never charged the fee and charged like twenty five thousand dollars worth of fees which is you know that, that was going from nothing to that just with the change of language. Yeah. Then you said, but the amazing thing is eventually I did manage money and I did place products because it was what they needed out of those conversations. But, but I helped in a whole lot more spots as well. Walk me through like the knock the door feeling versus the engaging in those <laughs> kind of discussions and, and, and the enjoyment that you, you had. Yeah. So I think the, the biggest thing is, Cops don't get called on me when I'm not knocking on people's doors in neighborhoods. Like, hey, there's a bald guy walking around asking about money. Can you check on him? You know where he's at. Um, nice. But, but not for a party until uh, the cops show up. You know. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't doing my job until I knew who the cops were uh, on that day. But uh, for me, one one appointment really stood out, and it was with some friends I'd had from other another firm. They decided to stay there, and I said, "Look, just give me an opportunity to show you what's different about why I'm here." Uh, Mm Because a lot of people here, change is so hard for people. Like they're still driving 90 model pickups. They live in the same house they've lived in for 35 years. So any change is a big disruption to them, right? And so I I pulled this couple in, sweet couple, and we just had this conversation around planning and about what what ideas I had because it's not product-based, it's it's idea-based. And I just started going through, hey, with your business, we can do this. Here's some of the concerns you have. Here's where you're at. Here's some ideas that we could have. And here's, here's the results that we can... We think that we can get you over the year and over the next 10 years, this is what it could really look like. And they got excited about it. And I was, I was sticking to the process. I, that was hard for me to get away from that sales mindset, to be honest, because I was really good at that part. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the second appointment, they go, when are we moving our assets over because of all this? I love it. So they were asking you and, and saying, hey, yeah, this is all great. Sounds great. When, when are we? When can we actually have you do all this work uh, that, that we forever didn't want to have you do, but you created such an, an, an impactful <laughs> narrative there that they were like, why wouldn't we want this guy who's helping us to yeah. do everything for us, even before you eventually got there? Yeah. And, and I think for me, the biggest thing too, is I could I can sit there and show them what we're about to go through over the next year, five years, 10 years, and give them kind of an idea of what's going to happen financially to them, um, how they're going to be more profitable, how their silent partner, the IRS, is not going to retain as much. And and they really liked it. I mean, it was something that was they could wrap their hand their head around and put their hands on. Yeah. You, Mark, you, I feel like go ahead, go ahead, Wes, and I want to see I was, I was gonna say you you became paid to be a part of the team. To have them have them have you on their team and they knew you were going to do a whole lot of stuff, not exactly what was going to happen, just that you had great ideas and you had more ideas that eventually you guys will talk about and get to. But they were just like, let's get started. Let's just let's just go ahead and go. We've we've heard enough for you to uh, for us to pay you 
to help us navigate into the future. Yeah, and and it was so hard. The accountability part for me was is is so much better now too. I can sleep better at night knowing I'm I'm the accountability parts much more clear in their eyes because it used to be performance. You know, what are you doing for us? And you know, for for years it was very easy to throw a dart at a board and, and see growth. But where with this, it's all based off of process. Like we have these calls, we know what we're doing, it's scheduled out. We we know what we're talking about now. We know what we're talking about next time. And for me, it's just so much easier of a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So the hard part of performance, right, is that if for those who don't know, Mark is not actually in charge of the stock market. Uh, and so performance can be a hard thing, right? And if that's the only measure, you're in trouble, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to be measured by things I can't control, you know? And so when you don't make it just about performance matters, okay, it does. But if that's the only measure, then, you know, that's a problem because you're going to get a whole lot of calls when performance is not going well. And it's not something that you have as much control over as oftentimes clients think that you do. One, one nuance that I want people to make sure that they heard is the, it's almost like, um, Wes, you know those Escher, I don't know how to spell his name, but the Escher paintings or drawings, and you look at it and it's like everything's sort of flipped inside of itself. It's this famous artist. And 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 I think the switch and the flip that that happens with advisors who are are doing good planning is you create instead of just saying assets, assets, insurance, insurance, you create a space and in, in a process where your client then says, well, this is, now you're going to take my assets, right? Now now we need to get some insurance, right? It, yeah. you, you, you flip it. And so you put a context around the decision for AUM or insurance versus it just being the yeah. AUM and insurance. And so that's where you get the client saying, well, I think we should, I think we should do this then. Right? Right, I need see. your help with this stuff lead this part along and go ahead and, and give you these assets to manage for us. And what Mar- Mark and I talked about that is it's before you see it, it's like, so wait, you're going to just teach me how to do what I'm doing, but charge fees for it in addition to the AUM and the commission. And, and it's, it's, it's not that it, it's a, I'm going to teach you to do something different. That's going to lead to far more of that other stuff, but you're going to be more pleasurable in the process because you are the product. You you are the thing that's being that's being acquired to be a part of the team for them, and they and they just after after you go through all the areas of planning that are possible. By the way, we're going to show you a lot of areas that don't ever get touched because when you're paid for advice, you have to have advice worth paying for. And and what ends <laughs> up happening is you learn a whole lot of new narrative that is so relevant to their financial story. It's just never taught at the at a lot of the traditional places that people make their way into the business because it doesn't directly associate with that particular product or that particular uh, AUM management, but it, it impacts it. It impacts it in such a major way that people are like, I, of course I want you to do everything. And, so Mark, and it's, I want to be, go ahead, go ahead, Mark. Oh, I was going to say, and, and one of the things I, it's probably just me that it has this problem, but people returning phone calls or getting back to us about appointments or, you yeah, know, things that we need to talk Mark. about. Yeah, it's, it's just, just me. I'm sh- yeah. I'm but we'll help you. Like, up. we'll help you here. We'll help you here. So, <laughs> yeah. How do you yeah. overcome that? Yeah. So, when people are paying a flat rate, they answer the phone much quicker. They return calls much quicker because they know they're paying for a service. And it's like the first car I ever drove was given to me for free. So, how did I, how did I treat it? Well, it was free. <laughs> it wasn't my money. I, I was tearing up. The first, the first truck I ever bought, I watched that thing every week. I pulled the tires and wheels off of it, cleaned the inside and out. You know, I took care of it much more when it was my money invested in it versus somebody else's. And I think that that really um, translates over to with clients um, interaction also is my planning clients return phone calls and they're much more interactive. Yeah, I I think about this model. um, Actually, Wes, go ahead. And then I have one more. Yeah, I was going to say the the biggest like tipping point. And and we talk about this all the time in in Transform is in, in actually language it with clients when we're in that first location phase is, hey, tell me about your advisors. And, and when you do put them in a couple categories for me, um, like we got transactional advisors, those that, you know, we call them to do a job for us and they transact the way we already think, or the, the, those that 
It may do some of that for us as well, but they're transformational, meaning they help us think and see and move more powerfully. And so as, you, as you're walking me through all the advisors that play roles, and, and where do they immediately put? Almost all the advisors they have is over on that transactional side of the ledger. And by default, where are they putting you? By nature, the first conversation you've had is always on that transformational side. So they are, they are, they are, it is a completely different experience, even though some of the components that eventually we will help them with, because I believe those are table stakes. You know, you got to be good at managing the money. You got to be good at putting the insurance in place, but such a, such a different story. And yours was one different. I mean, one thing I'll, I'd say about um, Mark is your, your speed to switch like we we get a, one of the things we teach in Tears Four is like why why don't people do what they know to do because they, they like we're like this works here's exactly what you say here's how you approach it here's the pattern you need to follow but you actually did it you 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 know a lot of people pay a lot of money and go through classes and then it's like that old proverb why is there the purchase why is there the hand of the fool fool the purchase price for wisdom since he has no heart for it and yeah. you had the purchase price for the wisdom and said I'm going to take this to heart I'm actually going to do the mm-hmm. thing that people aren't doing because I want to, I want to transform into something else. And, and you did it in record time, which was, which was pretty phenomenal. So Mark, I want to ask you, uh, as we kind of wrap up here, um, what has, and and again, I know you implemented, uh, but what is the, you know, they say old habits die hard. What, what, what is the challenge? You know, we don't want to, make it all sound like daisies and roses all the time, right? There, there, it's so work and it, there's, you know, there's effort to, to turn a ship, right. To change habits. So what part of this should other advisors, if they're considering transform, if transform, if they're considering, you know, switching from uh, that transactional uh, to the more transformative type of advisor, what are the things that you'd say, listen, you know, I think about this in relation to marriage advice, and maybe I just wasn't listening, but I wish some people were giving me some different marriage advice. Like, hey, it's going to be hard. Doesn't mean you're doing yeah. it wrong. It's just going to be hard, right? So, yeah. what what part of this do you want to tell other advisors? Hey, it's going to be hard, right? But it's worth it. So, what's hard, but but still, it's still worth it. Uh, one of the things that really stands out to me is undervaluing our our ideas, because uh, when I went to that class, you know that we were given scenarios about some very complicated estate issues. And then yeah. one of the questions we were asked was how much would you charge? And people were saying like a thousand dollars or, you know, $1,500. <laughs> and I was like, I'd charge a thousand a month for this because there's about to be a <laughs> whole lot of work and not undervaluing, you know, our time, our knowledge, our expertise. I mean, we are experts in this field. And yeah. um, th- the second thing is really understanding people's um, situation before you start trying to solve it. And one of the things that Wes said, mm. I can't remember where he said it was, don't answer questions that weren't asked. Uh, don't start Don't start trying to solve problems that are not there in their mind because it really muddies the water. And that was a conversation you and I had, um, I think, during that, that class was, you know, where's the separation from, from the first conversation to really get in a deep relationship with these clients. So, uh, and I, for me, it was, I'm a problem solver. I took all the, the anagram, the anagrams and all these yeah, tests yeah. and things. And time and time again, I'm a problem solver. So really having to push that back and go understand first, solve problem second. I, I love that you brought that up, uh, Mark, because it, it's, it's that, oh, and I, years ago, I heard Andy Stanley say that, that quote and the, the way he worded it was so, meaningful to me and and it's it's transportable you said the people we're trying to lead have got to feel the weight of the problem we solve before they care about our solutions and processes to solving it and and i you know because otherwise what are we doing as you said we're answering questions they haven't yet been asking and the reason some of our fantastic ideas and advisors that have wonderful concepts and wonderful thing processes to helping people the reason they don't get any traction is because we're, we're out there running around with an answer to a question that they're not asking. This process completely reverses that where on, they're demanding an answer to the question because you've built up the weight of the problem or the, or the size of the opportunity in their mind so much. And it, it creates a completely different environment. Yeah. So yeah, Mark, Chris, um, well, oh, go ahead, go ahead, please. Chris, one, one book that uh, I would recommend people read is Chris Voss's never split the difference. How to negotiate like your not life depends on it. 
one of the things he says that you listen for verbiage is people saying you're right, you're right, you're right to that's right. And that's when you really know that people are, you're really hitting the heart of the issue. Mm, love that. Love that. Well, I want to encourage folks uh, to check out WesYoungLive.com, which is where you can learn more about Wes and his programs, like the one that Mark went through. Mark, we want to thank you and um, just encourage you to keep fighting the good fight and uh, continuing to change the industry through the way that you work. Um, and I am uh, grateful that you don't have to knock on doors in August in Texas anymore. Uh, thank and thank you for, for living that lesson for us. So if you too want to avoid knocking on doors in Texas in August, then check out WesYoungLive.com. And uh, Wes, thank you for your time. Uh, Justin, as always, thanks for being here. Uh, and Mark, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate hearing your story. And uh, we hope and pray it was an encouragement to those who were able to hear it. So thanks, Mark. My pleasure. Thank you all. <laughs>